Okay, so we're gonna quickly cover how to get to the move, rotate, and scale tools inside of 3ds Max. So I have a box drawn out here, okay? I'm just gonna left click on it. And then all we have to do is we're gonna use the shortcut keys W for move, E for rotate, and R for scale. So just like in Maya. And then those three options are correlated right up here to these buttons. So W, E, and R. So W is our move tool. And we can just make sure that one axis is highlighted. See if, when things start turning yellow? That's how we know that they're activated inside of 3ds Max. So let's say I just wanted to move just in the Y. So I'll make sure that Y is the only thing that's highlighted in yellow. And then I can left click and I can move on that one axis. And I can do that for all of them. Just make sure that Z is accessed and just make sure that X is yellow, okay? Now, if I wanna move on two axes with the move widget, what I do is you'll see this kind of box shape connecting the two together. So let's say I wanted to move on Y and Z at the same time. What I would do is I would kind of hover over this little kind of corner where their two gizmos meet, okay? And now that they're both highlighted, if I just left click, it allows me to move on just those two axes at the same time, okay? And this holds true for the other two options. So if I go over this kind of this point right here, you'll see Z and X highlight. So I know I'm safely moving on those two and then kind of hover in here and you'll see I have X and Y and I can just left click and it'll stick to those. If I ever want to just freeform move it, I can kind of click this little box right here and this kind of lets me know that I can go wherever I want, but I really don't use that too often. Usually it's more precise. So we're going to move on. We're going to go to the rotate tool. And under the rotate tool, same thing applies. When it turns yellow, that's what we know is going to be our selected rotation. Okay? So I just make sure I'm over it and it turns yellow. And then I just left click and I can change my adjustments. Now, if I click in the center here, even though this line is yellow, if I'm not over top of one, what will happen is my sphere here will turn opaque. So it'll have a little bit of a transparency issue. And what will happen is this will let me know and notify me that I'm in free transform mode, okay? So you don't really want to be ever rotating in this mode because things will just go wackadoo real fast on you. So always just make sure you're over the line, it turns yellow, and then as you're rotating, it stays yellow, okay? Now, really quickly, we're going to cover snapping, but we'll do a more elaborate talk in the snapping video. But if you want your snapping to go to degrees, um, what we have to do is we come up to this option right here. It's called angle snap toggle, okay? And by default, yours will be off. And we have two ways to do that. We can either come back up to this button right here, angle snap toggle. It looks like a little magnet with a little degree symbol. We can click on it and then it'll be activated. Or if it's not activated, we can just hit A on the keyboard and this will toggle it on, okay? And if we want to back off, we can just hit A again. And so that's a really easy way to be able to snap pretty quickly. What we can also do is, with the rotate tool here, let's say that I rotated my object 45 degrees, and now I wanted to kind of pan it, but I, wouldn't, I wanted to go left and right with it, but I didn't want to just move it in rolled space like this. I wanted to locally rotate it. What we can do is while we have this tool selected, you see right next to this, the little drop down box right here, set to world currently. If I change this to say local, what will happen now is it will change my gizmo. So my rotation tool is now locally rotating, which is super handy when we get into certain situations we want to do for different actions. Okay. So we can set it to that. Or we can set it to world, parent. We can even set it to screen, which will always point the gizmo exactly where your camera's at. I'm going to set it back to world for now. We're going to switch to the scale tool and the same things apply. So if I undo some of this, you'll see if I want to scale uniformly, I just kind of move to the middle. All three of my axes turn yellow. I'll just scale it down. If I want to scale in just two, I kind of hover in this little kind of box area that's created between the two coordinates. So on X and Y, X and Z, and Z and Y. And all I'm doing is just clicking in that space and left clicking and holding down and then just moving my mouse. And the same things apply here as they did with the rotation tool, where if I have it rotated slightly 
and I go to the scale tool, I can change this box to local and adjust it. And what you'll do is you'll notice that if I put this back to world and I switched back to the rotation tool and set that to local, these options are set now independent of each other. So just remember that like this tool might be set to world, but if I jump back to rotation, the last thing I was doing was this one local space. So just double check yourself if anything gets weird. You can just reset these to local or set them to world. So I hope that explains a little bit about the move, rotate, and scale tool inside of 3ds Max.